being an other, because mm-hmm. I am technically classified as an other, mm-hmm. um, you are taught that being an other, you're going to get HIV, you're going to die. Mm-hmm. So there's that looming fear of death. Wow. Um, that I have. What do you admire about me most that I may not realize? (laughs) A lot, actually. I admire... Stop it. No, really. (laughs) I admire your courage to be who you are at such a young age and like how you have just always been someone who would go after what you want. And there's always an amazing update when I see you and we get a chance to connect. You are such a loving and caring person. And so, yes, I love that about you. (laughs) (laughs) What do you think connects us the most and why? Oh, my gosh. I'll say... Travis. (laughs) No, and our fight to focus on prevention Mm -hmm. and wanting more for not only ourselves, but those surrounding us. Yes. What do you believe people often misunderstand about people who are taking HIV prevention and why do you think that is? I think that there are a lot of misunderstandings about people who take HIV prevention because there's a lot of stigma still in our community and we're not having conversations about sexual health openly oftentimes. And so there can be a lot of ignorance and there can be a lot of, um, you know, just kind of putting labels on people like you're promiscuous or Mm. you're dating someone who is living like an alternative lifestyle or, or something. And so I think that HIV prevention, while it has come a long way, I think that as we are trying to get the word out, it's important that we talk about that there may be some stigma that you come across. And, you know, for me, I feel like that's a cross I'm willing to bear because I think it's important enough for if someone does say something to me that is not true, that it's an opportunity for me to educate Educate. them. Exactly. Gross. Mm -hmm. What is the greatest thing that has made or would make preventing HIV easier for you? I will say prep. Mm -hmm. Prep and education. Um, Because it's, there's no like, oh, so this is what this is and this is how this works. And if you focus on this, then you can do this. No, it's very much so. This is what it is and this is how you're going to end up. Mm. Um, and with that being instilled in me doing the work to break that, I can say that education was the best thing for mm-hmm. me. And prep was the second best thing for me. Mm-hmm. First best, but second best. <laughs> Love it. What do you feel is often left unsaid between a patient and their healthcare provider? And why do you think that is? Oh, I think the truth <laughs> is left out because, um, you know, I've been really fortunate to have great relationships with my healthcare providers, but I can understand how just a regular patient might not feel very comfortable explaining why they may want to be on PrEP right. um, or even having just a sexual conversation with a doctor or with a, a healthcare provider. So I think sometimes the the truth is left out because we fear judgment mm. and we're not sure how that's going to be perceived as somebody who is in like an authority authoritative role. Mm. So um my hope is that this actually what we're doing right now helps people to know that you should advocate for yourself Absolutely. and and take that opportunity when it's just you and your healthcare provider to be as honest as possible so that they can help give you the best plan for your health. Right. 
What do you think is stopping patients and HCPs from speaking out about sex and HIV openly in healthcare appointments? Um, I think it's an air of shame. Mm -hmm. And you know, your relationship with your doctor, you start going to the doctor with your parents, mm -hmm. right? And with your parents in the room, I feel like there's constantly that mindset where it's like, oh, my parents in the room and I'm here with my doctor and now I'm feeling the shame of mm -hmm. what I've done and I don't want to be open and honest with them because what if they judge me? When in fact, they're not there to do that. They're there to make sure that you're healthy and up to everything that you need to be up to. Mm -hmm. So people don't feel the most comfortable to be vulnerable about what they're doing right. or like what's going on with their health. Mm -hmm. A lot of us aren't allotted the opportunity to express ourselves comfortably. So mm -hmm. I can, it's difficult. What is your advice to Black women in terms of how they communicate their needs around sexual health and HIV prevention to their HCPs? As you were reading that out, the only thing that was coming to my mind was have audacity. Like right. this is your health and please like take this as an opportunity to really engage your HCP. And sometimes your HCP will have to be, you know, you'll have to take the lead, right? right. They don't they don't always know um, to, what to ask you. And so you might have to volunteer that information, but advocate for yourself. And if something doesn't feel right or if something isn't working for you, don't suffer in silence. Like, make sure you bring that up and have that conversation with your provider. And if your provider is not meeting your needs, feel free to find another one. Literally. Someone that that is willing to do what it takes to protect you and to make sure that your health is top tier. What has been the hardest part about HIV prevention for you? And did you raise these concerns with your HCP? Why or why not? Um, I think the most difficult thing is wanting the people around you to be where you are mm -hmm. when it comes to prevention. So have I talked to my healthcare provider about it? Yes, actually, because I wanted to know the best ways to reach out to the people that I am surrounded by and actually get them to be where I am at, you know, because you want the best. I literally want the best for the people that are in my life. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to have these conversations and it actually be impactful to the point to where you're like, you know, I want more for me too. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it really is just the people and wanting to be one for the people and having the people be one for me. What do you think is a doctor's biggest blind spot and why? I think a doctor's biggest blind spot is their biases mm -hmm. and you know, what they are potentially thinking about the person that's sitting in front of them and making judgments and determinations on whether or not they are a good candidate mm -hmm. versus just offering it to everyone who meets the criteria and not trying to ascertain if this person's lifestyle fits or any of that. Like, that's actually not your job. Your job is to present the options for people who are in here who meet the criteria. And so I think the the challenge is to get HCPs and to get doctors to remove as much of that bias that they may naturally have. Like we all have biases just from life and programming, but to really be cognizant and um, conscious of that when you're going into a patient setting, like where you're going to be meeting with patients and asking them really vulnerable questions, like try to remove your own bias from that. If I had a crystal ball that could tell you the absolute truth, what would you never want to ask it and why? Mm, oh my gosh. How old am I going to be when I pass away? Ooh, ooh. Being an other, because I am technically classified as an other, mm -hmm. um, you are taught that being an other, you're going to get HIV, you're going to die. Mm. So there's that looming fear of death Wow. Um, that I have. Wow, thank you for sharing that. I didn't know that. And that just like hit me really hard. Like to know that you're living with that is like heartbreaking. Yeah. And you know, that it makes me like 
you know, what can we do to change that? Because that is... The world has to change yeah. first before. Like, we can, I mean, we can be the change we want to see, mm -hmm. but the it's, it's not just us. Yeah, you know? I know. What do you appreciate most about our conversation today and why? I appreciate having, like, this intimate conversation with you where mm -hmm. we're learning more about each other and really getting to like experience each other in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I love hearing your thoughts and your experience on something that we share in common, but it's a very different experience. So that has been really enlightening for me today. Mm -hmm. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> what have you learned from this conversation that surprised you most and why? Um... I think the way that you retain the things that I say, because oftentimes I'm not used to being listened to, so I have to make sure people hear me, but you listen to me and you retain it. And like, it is affirming it, like to know that like I'm heard. So I would say that. Not have made it all the time. <laughs> and now I'm like, I'm tearing like up it's for nice real. to be heard. It's nice to be understood and not question who I am or what I am or how I want to be mm -hmm. in a world where I'm often misunderstood. Mm -hmm. So to have that, it's, it's a blessing, honestly. I'm very grateful for you, I must say. That's beautiful. Thank you.